This video is about a man known as the Iron Duke, a larger than life figure and a captain of industry, Dr. Ivan Koza. From Alexander to the world, from a cashier and a gate controller for Orlando Pirates in the 70s to being a chairman of the PSL for more than two decades now. Through the ups and downs, the infights and the violence at Pirates, the drug dealing investigations, problem with the taxmen during the 90s, they still couldn't shake him. You see, Koza is a boss amongst bosses. He's a general that led a strong team to many battles and he came out victorious. You see, his influence in South African football goes deep. He even served as the vice president of SAFA and was instrumental in bringing the 2010 FIFA World Cup to South Africa. Now, in this video, we'll be looking at the Iron Duke's life, his trouble past and how he made his money. Koza grew up in house number 58 on 10th Avenue in Alex. His mother was a cleaner at the local clinic and not much is known about his father. He attended Roma Mission School in Alexander, then Orlando High School in Soweto. He played for Alex Blackpool when he was younger and then at the age of 14, he was secretary of the Alex Football Association. See, this guy clearly had organizational skills from a young age. Now, around that time, his family had relocated to Soweto. Now, after high school, he went to Fort Hare University and was expelled in 1972 for activism in the liberation struggle. Now, since Fort Hare was known for having a lot of struggle heroes, I'm assuming that's where he deeply got involved in politics under the ANC. He was taken to his first Pirates meeting by China Di Baba Shongwane, who was the club secretary at the time. You see, Koza started working at the gate, collecting money for ticket sales and later became the youngest secretary of Orlando Pirates. Now, the Iron Duke rose up the ranks of the club and was appointed administrator in 1976. Now, at some point, there were infights and beefs amongst members of the team, including the players. You see, the club's performance was bad and eventually, the club was split into two factions. Now, one day, they had a match at Ellis Park against Joma Cosmos and Dibaba was leading one faction of the team into the field. Now the guys from the other faction rushed into the field and they stabbed Dibaba so many times in front of the spectators and the press. Everybody witnessed that horrific incident and miraculously he survived that time but a few years later he would be shot and killed. Now at the height of the infights, Koza decided to leave Pirates cause it wasn't safe and he wanted to pursue business. Before he left Pirates, on the 5th of Feb in 1979, Koza was sentenced to 3,000 rands or 12 months in jail for a fraudulent life insurance claim mounting to 50,000 rands. Now in today's money, that's around 2 million rands. Now he did it again in 1981. He was sentenced to 2,000 rands or 9 months in jail for a fraud claim of 43,000 rands. Now when things started getting hot for him, he left South Africa but not permanent and Orlando Pirates to go and do business in Zambia. Now it is reported that he owned a wine exporting company that sold South African wine in Zambia. But on the low, he was working for the ANC as some kind of undercover agent. Now in Zambia, Koza met some important connects, Vicky Hoswami, Milano Constantino, and Petras Kukumur, aka Peter Murray. They had a relationship with Koza that went on for some time. Now, not so long after Koza was mixed up with these guys, he was busted in Lusaka airport for possession of Mendrex and was fined 95 kwacha or 3 months in jail. Now, Vicky and his crew were running a Mendrex manufacturing factory in Zambia and eventually, the law caught up with them and they had to flee Zambia and lay low. Now, Petras Kukumur was an apartheid military agent. He had a trucking business that was operating between South Africa and Zambia, but on the low, he was doing undercover work for the apartheid government. Now, the relationship between Koza and Petras Kukumur pretty much exemplifies the darker part of the liberation struggle, where principle and profit, ally and enemy, were visually indistinguishable. Now, Koza has claimed in the past that he cut ties with Kukumur when he learned of Kukumur's apartheid military allegiance. 
but Gukumur and Kosa's versions contradict each other. And besides, Gukumur and Kosa were close allies even after the struggle. Now, Gukumur said, the government at the time suspected that Kosa was deeply involved with the ANC and raising money for them. He says that the ANC used various methods of obtaining funding which knew no boundaries. You see, there's a rumor that in the past the ANC was allegedly involved in the Mendrix trade to fund some of their operations in Zambia and Mozambique, but it's not a fact. Now on Kukumur's version, Koza did not work with him on projects for the apartheid military. Instead, he says Koza effectively turned him into an agent for the ANC. Now in 1983, however, he claims to have loaned Koza 400,000 which is 9 million rands in today's money from a defense force slash fund. Now after that, Kukumur and Koza became close and he advised Koza on his covert activities every few weeks. Now Kukumur says that in 1985, one of his special forces colleagues was arrested and blew his cover. Now Koza then cut ties with him until in 1992 when Kukumur contacted Koza and he started working for Orlando Pirates. You see, Kukumur became Orlando Pirates' office manager. Koza officially went back to Pirates in 1991. You see, the team needed a strong leader and they also needed funds and Koza was the man who can raise the capital. That's when he took over as the chairman of Pirates and he started turning their fortunes around. You see, Pirates went on to win the league in 1994 and in 1995, they became the African champions under the leadership of the Iron Duke. Now, in 1995, Koza and Sizum Tembu from the National Intelligence Agency spent 3 million rands in state funds to buy 30 luxury cars from the agency. Guys, this is back in those days, so you could do it. They registered the cars in the name of Safa. You see, there was a scam going on, but it wasn't clear. But the Mtembu was fired and Koza was told never to speak about it by the government. Now, this is to show that Koza was connected with people in the National Intelligence Agency. And I'm sure that came in a handy later on in his life whenever he got in trouble. Now, Vicky Khoswami surfaced in South Africa in 1994 after fleeing Zambia. He reconnected with his guy, the Iron Duke, when he touched down and it was business as usual. Now, in Soweto, there was a crew of truck dealers led by a guy by the name of Rox Lamini. They came together and put up 1.5 million rands. Now, in today's money, that's around 6 million. They put up that money to buy Mendrex. Now, they went to Mumbai to get the stash, but the connect in Mumbai advised them that Vicky will organize the stash for them back at home. Now when they got back, they made contact with Koza as he was like the connect to Vicky. You see, Vicky promised them that they would get the stash but he was taking too long with it to a point where Rox concluded that these guys were not going to deliver on the stash. Now Rox started threatening to expose these guys for the shenanigans they were doing. Now not long after that, Rox disappeared and he was nowhere to be found on his way to meet Koza regarding the stash. Now police never found out what happened to Rox, but his family insists Koza knows something about his disappearance. Now another dealer that was taken out for threatening Vicky and the gang was A.B. Pinky Cabela who played for Orlando Pirates in the 1970s and was also a bodyguard for Winnie Mandela. Now, one policing source told Amapungani that Pinky was assassinated because he knew too much about prominent figures involved in high-level Mendrex peddling. Now, a second police source said it was suspected that Pinky was feeding information to intelligence operatives and was killed to prevent him from divulging even more. Now after, there was Keith Mutapanyan who was also friends with Pinky and they knew he also had dirt on them. Now him and Pinky knew too much so that's why Keith was also taken out at the wedding celebration in Soweto. Now in 1995, things started getting hot. Vicky disappeared from South Africa and went to set up shop in Dubai 
where he had a Mendrix manufacturing factory and he was busted and given a death sentence. That was later changed to life behind bars, but he was released around 2012. He was working with authorities and probably snitching on other dealers. Koza old SARS 66 million rands between 1996 to 1999. You see, he had five properties in the northern suburbs and a private jet that he either undervalued or undeclared to SARS. Now, Koza was known to own a lot of businesses. Amongst many, he also owned Freedom Square Shopping Center in Cape Town that he bought for 42 million rands. You see, Koza was making so much money, but nobody knew where it was coming from and they couldn't get to the bottom of it. But it was reported that he was connected to at least 100 companies that he had a piece of or owned the whole thing. You see, if they couldn't get him for any of the crimes, texting him was the second closest thing they could do to him. Now, through his influence and political connections, eventually, Koza settled the issue and he paid Sars 10.3 million rands. Now, during the text case, a 303 rifle was found in his house, but that case was dropped. Now around this time, things were hectic for the Iron Duke and it was clear that there were people who wanted to bring him down. But regardless of the scandals, Koza stood firm and he was unshakable. You see, there were also people criticizing him for being the chairman of the PSL and the owner of a team at the same time. But for someone who was a football administrator since he was 14, few people possessed the knowledge and understanding of the business of football like he did. And over the years, he proved his critics wrong. You see, what's also special about Koza is that he's been at the top of his game since the 1970s and he has never stopped. And regardless of all the money he's accumulated, he always stayed in deep blue Soweto. You see, this guy is so rich, he could be a billionaire on the low if he add up all his assets and the money that he's hiding. Now, according to records, Koza had two wives and they both passed away in 2020 during the COVID pandemic era. Now, Koza always had a relationship with Jacob Zuma since the days of the struggle. Now, during his presidency, Zuma fathered a child with Koza's daughter. <laughs> you see, Zuma is a sneaky friend, I'm telling you. Now, Koza has been the chairman of the Premier Soccer League since its inception in 1996. And in 2020, he was re-elected unopposed for another four-year term, which is set to end in 2024. Now, Koza has been instrumental in securing the league's sponsorships over the years, including DSTV. Now, the Iron Duke has done a lot for South African football, and now in his mid-70s, he's preparing himself to step down. Yeah, that's all I got on this episode. And if you've got an opinion or anything to share regarding the Iron Duke, feel free to give us a comment. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like. Don't be stingy about it. And if you mess with the content that we do, subscribe to the page. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Peace to everybody.